I'm here to find out how you shop for plants and also how you combine plants. So I've come to ask Rosie Hardy, whose YouTube channel, Rosie Hardy Gardening, has got loads of fantastic stuff about plants, so do check it out. And Rosie also has Hardy's Cottage Garden Plants, which is one of the most award-winning nurseries in Britain. So Rosie, how do we choose plants when we go to the Garden <laughs> Central Nursery? Well, everybody is drawn in by the fact that there's lots of flower and lots of colour. Now there's no problem in buying a plant that's got flower and colour there, but you are looking for something that is healthy. So the main thing you want to look for is at the base of the plant. So when you are choosing a plant, yes, go for the colour. I mean, this is a fabulous orange, isn't it? But then you've got to look and make sure that it's got a good bottom is nothing better than that it needs to be thick in here with good foliage it needs to have a bit of roots just appearing at the bottom of the pot here so that it's not just a new plant put into a bigger pot you don't want that so something that is looking strong and healthy good amount of growth here and yes, by all means, get it with full flower on. Or if you know that you're going to a wretchable place, then you can go for something which hasn't flowered yet and you can get it maybe with just flower and with a good base like so. It depends on what you want. Do you want a little bit of impact straight away? Therefore, you're gonna get a lot more. Are you happy to let it grow and have it smaller? That's the way to look at it. And is there anything else we need to know when we are pushing our trolleys around <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean d one thing don't get sidetracked although you know the nurseries might like you to get <laughs> sidetracked but the, the thing to remember is that you are wanting a plant to grow in the right place you've got to think about the aspect of your border to start off with so that you get the right plant so if you've got a nice sunny border say it's west facing that's one of the easiest ones to do because you've got gentle light and then you know as reasonable soil you look at plant material what do you want to do do you want to be bright and colorful do you want it to be tonal and what are your aspirations for that border that's your starting point so you go out and look for the plants that you like that are suitable for that situation and if you like big daisies get big daisies everything is personal choice but do remember that if you fill a whole border just with big daisies, it will look really quite boring. Yes, lots of pretty round faces looking at you, but it will be quite boring. You've got to remember when are these plants going to flower? What is their length of flowering? So are you going to have flower, albeit intermittently right the way through the season, or are you going to have a big burst of flower and then it stops? So if you have a big burst and then it stops, what's going to follow on from that? And these are the sort of things you've got to understand. Is it going to be sequential? And looking at putting something that's round with something that's upright breaks up your, what you're looking at. So this beautiful orange will go with something like this blue here. So if you were to go just for colour contrast, you've got really beautiful colours which will go together. The other thing you've got here is you have a round flower and you have a spike flower. So those contrasts you want to be thinking about. You want to be thinking about leaf shape, leaf texture and also using plants which are things that I call see-through plants. So they've got a lovely base which means that they can be planted quite near to the front, but their flowers are tall, but you see through the stems, so you are looking round or just looking through it. So there'll be a nice blob of colour at the top here, a thin stem and then base. So they're quite nice to put at the front. This goes away from what the old adage was, that you put small, medium, large, so that you get this sort of shape of them going backwards and going up high. I actually like to have a bit of blousiness, then a bit of soft, and then a bit of height, and then a bit of low. And that way you get this undulation going through, and it means that if something isn't tall at the beginning of the year, it's tall at the end of the year. And you've got to plant what you like, because there is no point in going out and buying plants being told, oh, you've got to have that, you've got to have this. No, it's your garden, you've got to enjoy it, and that's what I say to people, you know, really enjoy what you like. Other people may not like it, but not everybody likes Marmite. 
So that's where you are starting from. And then it's a matter of thinking, how wide do these plants grow? Because you've got to put them together so that they don't overshadow each other. You've got to remember some plants you'll buy as a small pot like this. So say something around about 10, 15 centimetres in size, but it's going to grow to something that is 60 centimetres. So you've got to give it its growing space. Now it won't do it in a year. It won't maybe not do it in two years. So what do you do in the meantime? Well, you fill in with annuals. And it's very easy to scatter a bit of cosmos seed or nigella and just have a little bit of filler which you can then just pull out as the plants and also as those plants go over they'll smother those annuals and it won't really matter. So the plants will be quite happy to grow if, you, if they've got annuals in the way but they don't want another perennial crowding in on that, them. Yeah like that's that. correct because the annual is going to die off anyway so while they're growing they'll just go over the top of it but if you've got another perennial then they're both going to be pushing each other's space so i always say to people if you really are unsure hold your pots shoulder width apart and for most plants that is your right spacing if you then have something that's really going to get large so think of something like cynara or you know the cardoon that gets absolutely massive leaves. You would need to give that a lot more space, but it takes three years before it gets that big. So it'd be quite nice to put in a little bit of annual stuff while it's growing and leave that space there because people get, find it very, very difficult to leave bare earth for something to grow into. Yes, if you want to put in something like a biennial or two, so you know you can use the odd foxglove or the odd bit of Hesperus, for instance, they would all fit into some, that sort of planting. And after two years, they're finished and the big plant has grown into its space. Know where you're going to be putting the plants, know your soil type, and always ask the questions. You know, that's the thing, especially if you're going to a nursery, you've got plenty of people who are very, very knowledgeable about their plants. And you want to be asking those questions and saying, do you think this is correct for my soil? I've got heavy clay, it is very, very wet. Will this beautiful saxifrage grow there? Probably not. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, ask those questions. For instance, this beautiful GM, yes, it won't mind heavy clay. And those are the sorts of things you want to be asking. If you're going to be growing in a container, no problem, because you're going to be giving it what it wants. You're going to be watering it yourself. You're going to be putting it into a compost that you've bought. That's fine. But in the ground, it's different. You need to have right plant, right place. And am I right in saying that actually any plant will grow in a container? Just about. You've but. just got to get the drainage correct. That's one of the key things when you're growing something in a container is the drainage. Some things will want it slightly heavier and they'll want it to be moister. Some things want to have a lot of water and then they want that water to drain out very, very quickly. So they've got to go into quite a sharp drained uh, type of material that they're going into. It doesn't matter what you use. Um, you know, you can use your own garden compost. You can mix in grit. Try not to use sand. People always say, oh, I'll put sand in to create drainage. No, sand will actually hold and it fills up the air holes in the compost. So therefore, it makes it a wetter compost. And never go too large a container because you put a plant in, say, a small plant like we've just seen, put that into a great big container like that. It's like it being chucked into a huge big pond and having to swim. So go up in stages when you're doing that. Or if you're going to multi-plant, that's fine but think about them going into the same amount that they need. Their roots are going to grow out. Some plants have roots which spread across the top, some have tap roots. So think about the way and whether you need to have a shallow container or a deep container. So that's something you probably have to ask a nursery, wouldn't you? You would because have I to don't ask think them. Any of us going around with pots would necessarily know. No, exactly, you, wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't know. You'd have to ask them and say, does this need a deep container? Will this be happy in a shallow container? Here at Hardy's Cottage Garden Plants, it has actually been very windy today. So we've come inside and we've gone outside. So if there's a sort of very blowy bits of this particular video, then please forgive them. And if you'd like to know more about growing perennials and herbaceous plants and having just about the most fabulous border you can, don't miss my Brilliant Borders playlist, which is just after this video. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.